Hey guys, how's it going? So today we're going to be going through uh, this bus GPT uh, paper and we're going to go through the code. Uh, and uh, the nice thing today is that we're going to try to write the pseudocode for this uh, so that we get to solidify our understanding. So I thought this will be good uh, to kind of like understand actually the core algorithm behind this bus GPT. So yeah, uh, I think without wasting any time, let's get into it. So one thing that makes the sparse GPT um, technique to stand out is the fact that it essentially can be able to tackle uh, models with over like 100 billion parameters in an efficient way. So there's quite a few of techniques that can actually prune uh, models with like over 100 billion parameters, especially doing it so in an efficient manner. So I was quite impressed by this paper. And as we're going to get into the code and the algorithm, we're going to see how it works. So, um, so what the authors state here is that they can actually prune um, GPT family models to at least 50% sparsity in one shot without any retraining at a minimal loss of accuracy. I think this is quite interesting, given the fact that, um, especially in the AI community, we always want like uh, models that can be quick to run on an inference because that reduced a lot of cost. So these techniques are very, very appreciated, right? So, uh, however, I did see uh, there was one time whereby I saw on Reddit, some people were saying that the reason they were able to prune these models such as OPT uh, and Bloom uh, to over like 60% uh, 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 sparsity was because these models were under trained. So I'm not sure of that, but that's something that I think uh, we should be aware of. But we're going to look into how how we prune the Lama so, uh, as we go through the code. So um so yeah we're gonna try to see how that one works anyway um we have this uh what is it we have this layer wise pruning right so the nice thing about this is that as you guys will see that essentially they reuse the same code that they used on the on the gptq uh so some of the stuff that i'll be saying uh they, they're essentially the same with the technique that they used on the gptq so that's pretty cool so what they do here is that with layer-wise pruning is that we try to break this pruning problem into more like of a layer problem, right? So uh, this is from a layer problem, we have this objective that we want to minimize. So essentially this, ob this objective, you can think of this equation, we have this W which is going to represent the weights of the layer and we have this X which is going to represent the input to the layer. So we need to compare the output of the layer. This is not pruned. And we need to compare uh, that, like check the difference with the pruned version. So we can think of this M here. It represents uh, the binary sparsity mask that indicates which, which uh, weights are going to be pruned. So by binary, I mean like there's one and zero. So zero means that we're going to prune and one is going to mean that we should keep these weights. So that's why here we we have that dot product. So yeah, then this the output is gonna be multiplied by this input. Then we check the difference between these uh, these two. So the objective of pruning is to minimize essentially the difference between the original the original output of the layer and the compressed output. Uh, so between these, the difference is calculated as we can see here as a as a L2 norm of the difference between the two outputs, the equation is going to be uh, uh, is going to be solved by finding the optimal values of this, of the yes of the uh, sparsity mask and the compressed weights. That's like what we're gonna we're gonna try to solve. So this is quite important for you to understand uh, that we're trying to uh, find the optimal values of the sparsity mask and also of the compressed uh, weights. So this is because of when we go into some of the motivation, you will understand uh, in a much more good way. So uh, let's scroll down and get straight to the uh, sparsity GPT algorithm. So for a fixed um, pruning mask, the optimal uh, values of all the weights in the mask can be calculated exactly by solving the sparse reconstruction problem corresponding to each uh, matrix uh, row. So essentially, this problem can be split into a row-wise subproblem. So we can think of this uh, XM as um, 
as it denotes only the subset of input features whose corresponding weights have not been pruned in row. And then this uh, WM is going to be their respective weights. So they do state that, however, this requires inverting. So meaning that reconstructing reconstruction is going to require the invention of the Hessian matrix. So what they mean here is that essentially when you try to reconstructing the pruned weight, uh, it's going to be hard because of it requires the invention of the matrix while solving for each row. So I think the best way to explain this, it will require me to visualize the entire thing. So going back to one of the key objectives that we did mention was that we wanted to find the pruned weights and we wanted to find the mask, right? So as we spoke about when we were talking about the layer-wise pruning um, objectives. So the, because of this, what we want to do is that essentially the algorithm, how it works, is that it's going to select the pruning mask, which is a, which is a binary which contains zeros and ones. And they specify which weight we should keep and which one we should we should not keep. So now the question becomes, how do we then, um, given this, how do we then make the update? How do we then make the update to this um, weight in such a way that we get to minimize the output between the pruned version and the unpruned version? So the first thing that we're going to do is that we're going to make the updates using what we call the Hessian matrix. Right. We have a Hessian matrix here. I'm going to denote this as H. So essentially, you can think of Hessian matrix as more like a mathematical tool that describe how the loss function changes with the respective of the weight. So now, because of this, we have to use this. Now to make to make the updates to the weights, we have a problem which uh, we're gonna go into in more detail, but the problem essentially is that reconstructing the pruned weight is that we require uh, inverting a matrix, right? So you can think of here, we have some sort of like small matrices. I'm gonna use a different pen because of this is a row wise sub problem. So these uh, these sub matrices will have to correspond to each row. So uh, I think this way you will get to understand the bottleneck of this in a much more detail if I use these different colors. So like I was saying, so now the problem becomes that the reconstruction of um, Reconstructing of pruned weight is that it requires inverting a matrix, right? So you can think here, we have to select from this Hessian matrix, we have to select an invert. And then from these, we have to then make the necessary update to a specific row. So here it's going to be green. Let's say here we have pruned weight, then we have blue something like this, so, so forth and so forth. And we have something like this. And this is going to be pruned pruned and pruned, something like that. So the the, 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 the problem with doing it this way, the, the, the reason they're calling it raw, a, a raw Hessian challenge, it is because the, the, the pruning mass can be different for each row, right? And of, of the weights. So for example, one row of the weights might have more zeros, like here you can have more zeros, and the, the other one you can have less, uh, you can have less uh, zeros. This means that the inverse of the Hessian must be computed independently. That's why we have these matrices for each row, yeah, like so. Um, uh, like so, like, you know, I'm using different colors, but you, you, you get the point anyway. So that's what this, this challenge, it makes it very hard because now you have to compute these Hessian matrices uh, for each row. This makes the problem computationally expensive and difficult to solve. So I think that's what here in the paper, they, they speak about these, uh, let me just zoom in. Uh, they talk about this uh, time complexities that it requires uh, to, to do this. So th that's what I think, let me just uh, scroll up so that you can essentially see. So this is uh, this is the same diagram that I was trying to, to show you uh, when I was drawing. So the, the illustration of this role Asian challenge essentially we can see that the rows are pruned independently and the pruned weights are in white so these whites are that's what the pruned weights are then the Hessian information is used for the weight uh, reconstruction right since mask may be having different 
um, sparsity, may be having different zeros. So the, the inverse computation might be performed independently for each row. So we can't reuse this for different uh, for different row. That's why we have to do it for 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 um, for each row. I, I hope like my explanation kind of like gives you an idea uh, of like uh, why this is this is uh, not efficient as as in the why they call it the row hashing problem in this case. To overcome this uh, challenge, essentially what they do is that they try to say that uh, how about we reuse the Hessian matrices uh, between the rows. So each row we know that it has a distinct mask, right? Like each row has a unique mask. That's how it is, right? So we're going to use these Hessians, yes, but uh, with distinct pruning mask. So they find out this technique is lead to an accurate and efficient algorithm. So what's going here on here is that essentially we're going to do this in a more of a column fashion. So you can think of this as an increasing way. We we'll go to the second column. Also the the, the Hessian inverse here. You can see that we we kind of like going this in a diagonal fashion. So what what's going on is that essentially. Um, we, we prune weights in each column of the matrix incrementally using this um, using a sequence of Hessian inverses, right? Then we're going to make an update uh, to the remaining weights, right? We make an update. So this white here is coming from here. So this means that we should be pruning this. So if we on this column, we're going to prune these remaining updates, the remaining weights, I mean to say. So there's a, there's a pruning here. We're going to prune this and the remaining uh, weights, we're gonna make an update. So we can see that that represented in this dark blue, whereas this is pruning, we're gonna make a uh, remaining update. So the question might be, why are we making the update? We're making the update to compensate for the pruning error. So we can think of here as we're pruning, we kind of like accumulating an error, right? So now we have to make an update. So hence I said, this is the same technique as we used on the GPTQ. It, the same thing they are doing also there. If you watch my previous video, they, they, they following the same the same structure. Even the code, it looks the same. So that's what they, they, they doing in this case. So these light blue, they, they, they're not gonna be updated because they were not supposed to be pruned like so. So that's the key thing uh, that I, uh, I observed from this. So now we have these adaptive mask. I think this represent the adaptive key. Yeah. Uh, illustration of objective mass selection. So yeah, as we gonna go through the block, so you can think of like we're gonna have a full loop because we have to go through each column, then we're gonna have a step size of a block. So within that block, uh, we, we have to now update these, uh, we have to update these masks. So, um, so what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna rewrite this uh, pseudocode in Python so that you get to understand this in a much more deeper way. Uh, so let's do that and rewrite this pseudocode from scratch. And this way you will actually be able to understand the entire algorithm and how it works. And uh, that brings me to my second uh, request, which is that I'm thinking of starting uh, a project, an open source project whereby I rewrite some of these models uh, using some sort of like pseudocode. So this way I feel like people uh, can contribute, like maybe they can correct me, if, like something like that. But the most important thing is that everyone can understand, right? Like everyone can read like 30 lines of pseudocode, you know, written with easily with NumPy, and they can get an idea very quickly what the paper was all about looking at the code. So which I think it's going to help a lot of people to, to, to understand these concepts. Because sometimes going through a paper alone, I feel like certain things might not be clear or something like that uh, so just to get the main idea i think that might help so let's get into it if you did not understand everything that i said here will be repeated in the pseudocode because the pseudocode essentially represent everything uh, in a much more uh, easy way for you to kind of like wrap your head around so um essentially what are we going to do is that we're going to be following this uh this picture here, which is the pseudocode of the sparsity GPT. Um, but at the high level, how you can think about this is that we need to create a, 
a pruning mask with uh, zero and ones, and we need to construct an error matrix. I think that's called the uh, block quantization error in this picture. And then we need to calculate the, the inverse Hessian sequence information. This is going to be through the Cholowski uh, decomposition. Uh, then we're going to loop through the block. And this might be confusing for some of you because I didn't specify this. But we can think of like, uh, if I go through the source code of Spass GPT, we can think of this as like we're going through um, the, the columns, but we have this uh, block size. That means that we, we're going to be, you can think of this as more like a jump rate, so to speak. So um, th that's what this means. So we look through the block while uh, uh, we update the pruning mask and the, and the error. So which means that we initialize the mask and the error. And then we, as we loop through, we're going to update those uh, matrices. Um, then what we're going to do is that we're going to have to select the, um, the largest weight for each block and uh, set their corresponding values in the pruning mask to one. Um, then there are some of these details, I'll get into them as we go through. But that's like the main thing. So we kind of like have to prune, update uh, at the high level. That's what it is to, to this. So um, how this is going to work is that we're just going to write the whole entire code in one block as much as I want to keep it short. So um, I'm going to say numpy uh, np, then we're going to have the size. I'm going to leave the comments for you guys so that uh, everyone who's go through this pseudocode, they can actually be able to understand. And I think it will help if someone want to make the changes also. So I'm going to say this is going to be the um, define the size of the um, weight matrix. So I'll, also another thing is that I'll try by all means to explain the intuition behind uh, this, uh, this, um, the things that I'll be doing. The reason why we are doing this. I think this way it gets to help a lot of people to have a deeper understanding about these uh, concepts. So uh, we're going to have a block size uh, for the weight uh, matrix, which is going to be small uh, than this. So it's going to be a block. Um, size, which is going to be uh, 3 by 3, um, just like we, we're doing. So essentially this block size, if we look into this, so we do things in a more of a block wise um, as we keep on, uh, as we update these uh, these uh, errors and these masks, we, we do them in a block fashion. Um, as we, we're going to be looping through, you're going to see uh, this in more action. So um, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to need to initialize the weight and I'm going to need to initialize the mask because of that's what we're going to be working on and that's what we're going to have to update anyway. So uh, I'm going to comment here and say initialize the weight uh, matrix uh, in the pruning mask, right? So uh, with um, random uh, values. So uh, essentially, we're going to have to update these. So we can think of this as the weight uh, of the layer. So in this case, uh, in the source code, essentially, we get this layer here. So we, we extract the weight of this layer here. So we call this W because we, we say layer weight dot data. Uh, that's what uh, that's why here we we have this W here. So uh, I'm gonna say dot rend, and this is gonna we're gonna destructure this tuple so that we have a weight matrix of ten by ten. And then I'm gonna have a mask. So this mask essentially is gonna be a binary. So which means that I can actually use the Python function which is called uh, random dot choice. So this is quite a handy function. Essentially, it's going to select from these choice that you give it, 0 and 1, and you can give it a uh, size. And it's going to choose that randomly when it starts. So we're going to have uh, a mask of 10 by 10 with 0 and 1. So that's pretty cool. Uh, then now I am have to initialize the matrix of the weight. So uh, just to kind of like, like I said, that I want to explain everything intuitively. So you can think of this as more like 
if we look into the paper again, uh, essentially we prune in a more of a uh, in a more of a uh, column fashion, right? But then we need to update the rows uh, as we prune. For instance, you're gonna prune on this column, but then you need to use the Hessian matrix to update the row of that. So uh, the purpose of like doing this is because of you wanna compensate for the error of pruning. But now, how do you then calculate that error? Hence, here we're gonna have to have a matrix that keep track of that error. So this is gonna be E equals to NP dot zeros. Um, I think this is gonna be the same size with the weights because of for each weight is gonna incur an error. Then uh, we calculate this, uh, we calculate the inverse, essentially um, the inverse hashing uh, uh, sequence information um, via Polosky, right? Decomposition, uh, decomposition. Oops, I can't type. Sorry about that. So uh, we're gonna have this, and this is gonna be np dot. Um, it's gonna be the same size with the weights. So what we need to do is that we need to transpose the weights and have it like so. So it's the dead product of the transposed weight against the weight. So we're gonna have this um, Polosky, which is gonna be n dot uh, linear, um, linear, what is it? Linear algebra function, right? So it's gonna be dot Cholosky um, of this Hessian matrix. Then we're gonna have this Hessian inverse in which uh, we're gonna use this np dot linear um, algebra algebra right oops uh i forgot this function um then i'm gonna see dot inverse of this hessian matrix so that's what it is and uh i'm using numpy here uh, i don't know if you guys want me to use pytorch but let me know in the comments since this is going to become an open source project whereby we kind of like write the pseudocode for these papers um so let me know if you prefer PyTorch or uh, Python, uh, NumPy or PyTorch. Uh, anyway, so what we we have all the components that we need, right? We have like the hash matrix, which is going to help us to do all these updates. We have the mask, we have the weights, which we need to call uh, prune. Um, yeah, pretty much we have the block in which is going to, as much as we're going to be doing this in a block fashion wise. But now we need to get into the for loop, right? So we need to loop over the block of the weight uh, matrix, right? Um, so that's what we're gonna do. And then uh, we're gonna select the block of weights and the corresponding block in the mask and the weight because we're doing this in a block fashion. So you can think of like given a weight, extract the block. Given the mask, extract the block, then go and do the transformation. Okay, let me see if this is also something that they do in this source code. Um, uh, if some of you, if you watch my previous video, you'll see that this code is the code that we covered on the queue. It's just the same thing. Um, but anyway, I, I'm interested in, in seeing this. Yeah, it, it's, it's pretty much the same uh, as you can see here that we, we kind of like work on a more on a block fashion. Yeah, you see here, so it's a block fashion. So it's, 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 it's the same thing because of this, uh, of this. So um, th that's one thing that I'll, 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 I'm observing here. So which means that we're gonna do the same. So uh, we're gonna say loop over the block, right? Uh, we're gonna say block of the weight um, matrix, right? Um, for i in uh, range starting at zero. So we're gonna go all the way to the size uh, dimension, but we're gonna jump by using the block size so we're going to choose the first dimension then because of here i'm using i'm not using like matrices um um like for example i think here they're using matrices multiplications and all of that dot product but i'm going to use a for loop a double for loop and this is mainly because i think this way we try to keep things as simple and readable so given a matrix uh, it's like you can think uh, in Python. In Python, you have a double list, and you have like a list like so. 
then these are your rows like something like this right so these are your rows and you have columns so then now what's going to happen is that you're going to get the first list loop through it get the second list loop through it so this way i think it's much readable for people so we're going to start here uh because of now this is uh the second you can think of here we're looping through the row then this is the the column so this is going to be size uh one and this is going to be the block size one so block size um one right so now we have all these looping function in place so we're gonna have to select the block because we kind of like extracting you can think of like extracting what we want okay so kind of like uh link this to the to the to the paper uh to the source code um what you you look here is like we're extracting what we want we're extracting you see this this is like extracting uh, what we want so you have this entire weight here that is coming from the that is coming from the layer but we are extracting what we want so that's what this code we're gonna write now so select the, the block uh, of the of uh my feeling is strong sort about that so it's gonna be of the weights and the corresponding corresponding oops corresponding apps uh, a corresponding block in the mask select the ma the block in the way select the block what am i saying select the block of the weights right of weights Just make sure my english is good as much as people will be going through this the corresponding block in the mask so i think that's fine then i'm gonna say block which is gonna be the block of the weights so it's gonna be w here so how we're gonna do this we're gonna starting at i index first uh, row then go all the way to this is a two-dimensional array right so that means we have to do the same thing for the column and the row so go all the way to the block size right um first dimension right that makes sense right it has to make sense so you're gonna say j all the way to uh it's gonna be j plus um block size um i hope this makes sense what i'm doing here it's like a simple subset so essentially what we're doing here is that we're trying to extract the the, the, the you can think of like we're moving from zero all the way to three and we're gonna extract that so because of this weight here has 10 by 10 we're gonna go from uh, 0 to 2 that's what we're gonna extract and this is gonna be across the the, the, the row and the dimension so we we extracting a small matrix um that's what you can think about this so we have this blast mask and here literally we're doing the same so i think it's better if you can even copy and paste uh because we're working in blocks so it's, it, i think this way they did it actually smart uh in this code here because um uh, they just did it once uh and they reused this w uh but i'm gonna keep it this way <coughs> it's much readable <coughs> um anyway uh sorry about that we have we're gonna select the unpruned weights in the block select the unpruned weights um in the um, in the block right i'm gonna leave another comment and say select uh the pruned um weights in the block so essentially you might be asking yourself what's the intuition why are we doing this it's because we want to um we want to calculate the error which i'll show you how to do now in a second so we, we need to keep track of the error of like uh quantizing these weights for, for now what i'm gonna do is that i'm going to say unpruned um weights is gonna be equals to so we're gonna take the plus mask right so this is just like a subset in python so it's gonna say plus mask equals to one 
right? So we know that one means that something is not pruned because of that's uh, essentially that's um that's one, right? So we want to prune anything that has zero. So um, actually, oops, sorry, sorry, sorry about this. So this is supposed to be a block. So we're extracting all the unpruned weight here. So sorry about this. Block is weight here. So uh, I think I um, made a silly mistake. So which means that here it's going to be pruned. So you're going to take the block, which is representing a small block within the weight. So um, we're going to say take that block and take this block mask and say this is should be um, zero, so to speak. So that's pretty cool. Uh, now uh, we're going to compute um, com oops, uh, compute the error, compute the error, um, the error of pruning for each weight in the block. Okay, um, so how this will go is that we're gonna have an error which is gonna be numpy absolute of pruned. Uh, this is gonna be an element wise. Um, Difference, so it's going to be np dot uh, round uh, round of uh, prude prude uh, right. So this is what we're going to have um, in the in the source code. Uh, keeping things simple here, like I said, this is more like a pseudo code, but I think in the source code we're going to go through the source code. By the way, so uh, in case you want to get into the details of this code, so it's fine. Um, anyway, we we can see that how they computing their error. Uh, how are they doing it? Let's see. They there's to be some how they computing. So this is like their losses, right? So it's gonna be losses, and this is error. So they take this W, uh, subtract this Q, divide by this D. So I believe that this W, I just don't know. So it's this within this count. So it's this, right? And they have this D, which is Hessian uh, inverse uh, Hessian matrix. So yeah, I think that's what they 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 computing it. Then they have this Q, which is the weight. Um, yeah, that's how they 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 doing it in this case. But we're gonna get into this, and I will explain it in much detail why they doing it this way. But for now, that's how we're gonna do it. We have an error here, so um, I'll, I might have to try to re-implement it, but I'll, I'll see. I'll, we'll see about that. Uh, but uh, let's just uh, what can we do? So we have an error. So let's not just update the matrix, right? So update the error, right? Um, error matrix uh, with the errors with the errors. So this is going to be E, uh, it's going to be I, uh, so I'm just going to use the same code, right? So I'm just going to copy, because of we're doing this in a block fashion. So why not copy this and paste it here? I hope I, I did not get an error. So this is going to be, um, but first, we're going to have to, within the block, but also I need to subset and say, uh, block block mask okay block gonna be mask and it's gonna be equals to one then I'm gonna say this is equals to uh, errors okay errors that's fine um what's next um what we need to do is that we're gonna need to now Compute, so we're gonna to have to compute the inverse of the block, right? The Hessian, the Hessian mask uh, inverse, um, and the Hessian block. That's what we're gonna do, right? And um, so uh, compute. And I feel like after we went through this, it will be much easier for you to 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 look into this. Because you will see that some of the stuff here, they, they, they pretty much look the same, um, how, how we might be doing this here. 
to compute the inverse uh, of the mask, right? Mask Hessian. Um, this is this is. Uh, I'll explain the intuition behind this. I know that uh, without the intuition, this is this won't make sense uh, for the block. Um, so compute the inverse of the mask Hessian matrix for the block. So that's what we're gonna do. So I'm just gonna say H block, in which we're gonna take uh, the Hessian. Block. So we're doing everything in the block fashion, right? So, um, so which means that here I'm just gonna do the same thing. Just copy this uh, code here. Just really copy it. So that's what we have. I think the Hessian matrix is should be the same with them. As you can see, it's still the same thing with the um, uh, with the weight matrix. So they have the same dimension. So now we're gonna say Hessian mask. Uh, just Hessian mask is gonna be equals to np dot multi multiply. Uh, we're gonna do this with h block Hessian block, and then we're gonna say np dot outer. It's gonna be uh, the block uh, mask and uh, block uh, mask. So we have the Hessian matrix, um, Hessian mask, and we're gonna do, we're gonna have to calculate the inverse of this, right? Um, so we're gonna have to have the mask, Hessian mask inverse of this. So it's gonna be np dot linear, uh, linear algebra, right? Then we're gonna say dot inverse, then this is gonna be H mask. Um, like so. Um, I think that's what this is. That's what we have. Uh, let me see. Yeah, that's what. That's what. So, but in this, anyway, we can think of like, like I said, we're doing everything into a more like a block. So we're extracting these uh, Hessian matrices in a more of a block fashion, while we're keeping uh, these Hessian masks. Uh, we, we're also computing the Hessian um, mask in this case. So given that, so now we're going to have to come to the updates, right? So the first thing that we're going to have to do is to update the mask by selecting the largest weights in the block. So I'm going to comment here, uh, update, the, um, update the mask by selecting the largest weights in the block, right? So we're gonna say uh, largest, largest indices. So we, we're finding the indices of the largest weights in the block. So largest indices is gonna be equal to np dot, np dot partition, and we're gonna pass in the np dot absolute uh, block. Uh, then this is gonna be uh, negative block mask dot sum. Uh, oops. Uh, this is yeah negative dot mask. Uh, she dot sum. I think this should be. This is not correct. Right, that's what we have. Then I think here we're gonna have the x is. X is is gonna become equals to whatever it, it's not right. So, and we're gonna have. We're gonna have to subset the block mask. Right, so we're gonna have to say a uh, negative block mask, and this is gonna be some. Right, so, so um, that's fine. Then now we can actually convert the indices into two coordinates. So I'm gonna say to convert the indices into two coordinates, we can use this np dot unravel is going to be unravel index then we're going to pass in the largest indices uh, indices 
um, indexes and this is going to be block dot shape then here we can say this is the largest coordinates largest uh, parts equals to that so um, what we need to do now is to essentially set the corresponding elements in the block mask to one. So that's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna create a space here. So I'm gonna say uh, block, uh, block mask, um, so that we know that we don't have to we don't have to prune all of these large weights. So that's why here we're gonna set them to one and set the remaining elements in the block to 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 zero because we're gonna have to prune those. So we're gonna say block uh, mask and this is gonna be block a uh, block uh, block mask um, not equals to zero then I'm gonna set everything to uh, not equals to one I mean to say sorry um, gonna be set to zero so we wanna prune these ones so the small values within their 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 the weight within the block mask I mean to say so now um we have to update the mask for the entire weight matrix so we're gonna take the mask and we're gonna say as usual as you guys might have guessed we essentially have to do this within the block so we make our update within the block so that's what we do inside here so we pass this mask and we pass this block and then uh we're gonna say equals to uh block mask right so we have made that update our our um, <coughs> our mask has been updated um we then have to update the pruned weights in the block so that's what we gonna do i'm gonna say update um uh update the unpruned uh unpruned weights in the block so uh just to kind of like link what i'm explaining with the paper so uh <clears throat> as you can remember that essentially when we prune within uh, a column we have to update these uh these these um values within that row right so we have to make those updates so within that row of like what we're pruning so that's what this is going to do remember that when we prune we incur an error so that's what we calculated that right we calculated an error of pruning now we need to make this update uh we need to update these weights uh to 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 to, to kind of like compensate for that error so how this is going to be done essentially we can say update okay which is going to be equals to negative np dot uh dot which is going to be h mask um inverse which is going to be np dot sign uh and sign of unpruned we save these unpruned weights i think here if you guys can still remember so we still have them and then we need to multiply these by the errors okay um now the only thing that's left is to essentially apply these updates to to the to the block so we're gonna say block equals to um actually we can say block and we can say block uh mask so our mask don't forget that it's the one that help us to know which way it will be pruned and which way it should not be pruned so here you're just gonna um actually i think it's gonna be add right you add the updates right so that's what we do so you, you're gonna update you're gonna update those weights that's why we we have that class there so um what can we do now we're gonna update the weights in the matrix right so update the weights um in the in the uh, weight matrix i think um the blue it's gonna be weight gonna be i uh then it's gonna be actually you know what as usual i'm gonna copy our friend 
like here as usual we're doing everything in a block fashion uh, we already know that so i'm gonna paste it here and then i'm gonna say that's gonna be this block so we updated the weights in the weight matrix with these weights here and these weights have these updates and stuff like that and so that's what we did um so that's that's essentially how we interpreted this uh from this the stack round here and the other ones and um another thing that we can actually cover is that um after this for loop um it looks like we need to um we need to make some uh, updates right so we need to update the weights not updating the previous loop so i think that's what we're gonna do and we're gonna have to set the print weights to zero by element wise multiplication so yeah set print weights to zero um anyway that's what we're gonna do um i'm gonna remove this unnecessary space here so i feel like this is more of a like a trying to get an idea but anyway uh <clears throat> we have this freeze weights so uh i'm gonna write here that freeze uh freeze weights that were not crude that were not crude so this is gonna be a uh, mask uh equals to one right and be equals to np dot round um weights gonna be mask equals to one that's pretty cool um then we're gonna update the weights not update in the previous loop that's what update weights not updated in the previous loop uh in the previous loop of the processing uh processing all the blocks okay so that's what we're gonna do so we're gonna set the uh, Hessian matrix to be to be um np dot product of weight transpose and we're gonna have inverse of this Hessian matrix which is gonna be np dot uh, linear uh, then we're gonna say dot inverse of this matrix then we're gonna Set the print weight uh, to zero. Set the print weight to zero by element wise, element wise uh, multiplication, multi multiplication. Um, so this is going to be w equals to np dot uh, multiply w uh, mask. Um, does that make sense? So that's what we have. Mm, I think that's fine. Um, so this is this is this part here. Multiply this weight by by this m here so unless if i miss something but i think that's how i i'll i'll, I'll i have written it but yeah i'll open source these uh pseudocode uh as i from now on as i cover these papers and i think the committees can contribute and maybe can help me in a much more way to improve uh so that i can help everyone uh to understand these papers like in a much more short way uh, from these pseudocode and they can literally get an idea uh, without actually going through 
this uh, much of a code. So what I would like to do now is that now really like dive deeper into the source code. This code, this source code is not quite hard. Thank to Alfin Deu for uh, the, he, he kind of like fuck this uh, this GPT from the DS uh, lab, but uh, what he did is that he he applied this on the Llama model. But the the main the main files here for us to understand the core algorithm is this GPT uh, dot pi file, which we're gonna which is what we're gonna create now. Then we have these model utilities. Uh, let me see. Yeah, because of we doing things in a layer fashion, so this is gonna help us to find all of these um, child of these layers, and we that's where we get to get the the weights of each layer within the model. So um, yeah, so um, coming to the sparse GPT algorithm, essentially the first thing that we do is that we go into be initializing the Hessian matrix. This is going to be based on the dimensions of the uh, weight. So uh, we're going to extract the weights from the layers. Uh, so we're going to do this iteratively. Um, so you can think of like, we're going to go through all the layers and we're going to pass them uh, within this uh, sparse GPT. And when we pass them here, we essentially going to be uh, initializing these um, uh, variables right here. Then this end sample is going to represent all the samples uh, from the input so uh, i'll explain that in a second so um for you to understand um how these layers and how we extract the weights from these uh i'd like to make an example uh even though we're gonna get into this code uh so what you can think of is that from these uh model uh let me just show you this is by the way this is the lalama uh code that we want to we use to um we use to uh to to quantize to specify the weights right so we can see that we we get the model and we get all these weights right uh, then what we're gonna do is that we're gonna apply this function which is gonna find all of the subsets uh, within these layers so to explain this more intuitively let me show you from the collab notebook and how this works so how you can think about this is that if we are given a layer, essentially we need to extract these uh, linear layers, right, within this layer. So uh, then given these linear layers, essentially we can get all of the weights, right, something like this. So this is something like um, we did within this, uh, the, the sparse GPT uh, initialization step. So when we call that function called find um find layers if i'm not mistaken we are essentially going to find the name and the child uh within the layer itself so we call this function called named our uh, children and this is going to give us the name and it's going to give us this li these linear layers right uh but we can think of this as it's happening within their block so um so each block within the the transform architecture it consists of sub layers and uh, then this is consists of attention and uh, multi layer perceptron all of those things right so um i just needed you to understand this so that when i go through the code you have an idea of like the transformation so um so there this is what the fine layers does so essentially uh it's found within this model utilities so as you can see that essentially we have a module so you can think of this as that um uh, dummy model class that we created and we're gonna look through all the children so these are like those linear layers and then yeah, and their names then we just need to append them within this results uh, dictionary then what we do with this results dictionary we're gonna look through it and we're gonna pass those linear layers within the subset and you know that based on those linear layers we can actually extract those weights from those um, linear layers and that's what we do and then we initialize these Hessian matrix. This is based on the dimension of the weights. Okay, so um, mm, so let's get to the uh, add batch. So essentially, this is quite simple to understand in that we are trying to scale our Hessian matrix based on the input. So we just need to make sure that we also increment our samples by the new input 
uh, that's why hence here we take the first uh, element within the dimension of the input, right? So um, these n samples, by the way, you can think of an f uh, of these samples more like a batch. So if we look into the Lalama code, we go to data loaders, we can see that we have these arguments uh, to get the data. And this n sample here, it refers to a batch. So if I go to data utilities, we can see from here, okay? So that's what this n sample essentially uh, represent. I just wanted to make that clear so that it does not confuse you. Anyway, um, this is where uh, the meaty part of the algorithm comes into play. Then we have this faster prune. So um, what we have here is that we're going to be pruning the weights. Uh, but before we do that, we have this uh, quantizer. And some of you, this might come as a surprise because I did not ex explain this. But in the paper, they did say that essentially you can apply the quantization alongside their pruning. Uh, so I think this is used uh, when you want to use both techniques, right? So we're not going to cover this. I covered the GPTQ in my previous two videos. So check it out. But essentially, um, if you want to understand this, uh, check out my previous two videos. I explain uh, this quantized variable uh, code in which we try to find variables uh, such as scale, zero, and max Q which are the parameters for the quantization. So um, what do we do? We're going to initialize these uh, Hessian metrics and these losses based on the dimension of the weights row. And yeah, we just like doing what we did in the, in the, in the, in the pseudocode by initializing these uh, Cholosky inverse and the Hessian matrix inverse matrices. Then we're going to be looping through uh, the columns, right? Uh, we loop through them in a blockwise. So essentially, you can think of this code as like we go into the weights and we're selecting like specific column. So this is more like a range. You, you can think of it that way, right? So that's what we do. So we're selecting a subset of these columns, but we still process things in a column fashion, just like they said in the paper. That's why we have the second for loop which is just gonna select a specific column because if we have to do the quantization within that column, um, I hope you still remember that diagram that I showed you in the paper, whereby we, we, we have a column that we prune, then we have these updates that are happening on the rows. Um, then what's gonna happen in this case, we're gonna also initialize this Hessian metric. So this is correlated to the to the specific column within the weight. So this is quite important. Um, then we going to do what we said also in the in the pseudocode in which that we're gonna select the largest, we're gonna set the largest weight to one. Um, then, uh, then within that column, right, uh, we're gonna index these. So this is gonna be based on the mask. So we're gonna be setting these to to, to zero. So all of these, because if we clone the weights, then based on the mask, so the mask tell us which weight we should be, uh, we should be uh, pruning. So that's why we set them to one inside here. Okay, so this is where it's coming from. Um, so yeah, this is like the quantization uh, thing that I spoke about. Um, then we gonna have these losses and this is how we compute the loss in which we're gonna subtract the weights by the by this uh, quantized uh, variable and then we're gonna square these up and divide by the uh, subset of Hessian uh, matrix squared uh, then this is how we calculate the error by the way I did not calculate the error like this in the pseudocode that is because um, I wanted to keep things as much as as readable as possible. I think in the GPTQ, they did highlight these equations. Um, so yeah, uh, but if you guys uh, think it's it's important for me to include these equations in the pseudocode, like meaning that I shall write it this way, then that's fine. I think we can do that. Then. Uh, because the goal is to make sure that everyone gets a high level context of like papers and without getting into deep. Anyway, we we're making the update so we need to make the updates based on the error of quantization and we're using the hessian matrix right so we're going to update our weights right so that's what we do in this case and it's very important that you see that we 
updating uh, this this subset here. It's very important as shown in the paper. So we're gonna update everything to the right of the from that column, everything to the to the right of it, right? So that's what we doing inside here. Okay. Then this is quite easy in in that we just like um, updating our main error matrix by this error of this column that we just computed. Uh, and yeah, we're just gonna loop through uh, that range of columns. So you can think of that as a block. Then when we are done, we're gonna go and create, get another range of columns. And we're gonna do that uh, until we're done. When we're done, we just need to update the weight matrices and the losses. Then we also need to update the weights. So these are the actual weights of them. We're doing this in place. So these are the actual weights of the layer that we essentially imported from here, right? So we're using, we're accessing them and we're updating these. Um, yes, if I'm not mistaken, right? So yeah, we're gonna update these. Um, uh, let me see. Uh, yeah, I think, yeah, I think that's what we're doing. But yeah, I think that's this code at the high level. I just want to see this. It's uh, self dot layer dot weight equals to um, a weight reshape self dot layer weight shape. Yeah. So it, yeah, this is where we're doing the, the the updates. It's just that here we transposing or reshaping this uh, to be uh, the actual dimensions as expected. Uh, so yeah. So that's that. Uh, that's essentially the code. Um, so I'm not actually sure about one thing is that uh, because of I want to I want to I think of changing the code the pseudo code to have this error here uh, because of what we did in that we just has subtracted the unpruned and the pruned weights as our error. So I don't know if like you guys prefer me to keep things as simple as possible or me to uh, just like get a replicate everything like this or something like that. I don't know, but I'll, I'll, I'll think about it. Oh, someone can make a pull request if they think that will help. I think that's fine. Uh, anyway, uh, this is this is like the llama uh, model in which we're trying to prune. So we can see that we're getting this from the uh, hugging face. So the hugging face have created this uh, llama for casual LM in which you can provide the model. So essentially what you need to do is that you need to get access to the model of, um, of, of from Facebook Meta, then you're gonna, you're gonna use another code to trans to transform, to transform the weight to the hugging phase. Then you're gonna load them up using this, right? I'll provide the link on the step on how you have to do that. Then these are the sequence lengths and yeah. The main important thing in this case is that we have these layers that we initialize and these embed tokens. Um, the reason we have these is because we want to um, we want to have a forward path, right? So that we can save these attention masks. So what will how will this work? Is that we're going to loop through the patch and we're gonna call our model with like. Um, input from this patch, right? So by doing this, essentially, we're going to be updating this cache, right? With these uh, with these uh, values that are coming from the input. So the reason we are able to do this is because we have updated the first layer with this cache. So you can think of the first input is gonna go through this. So it's gonna update these caches. So the cache is gonna be having the inputs is going to be having uh, the attention mask, uh, right? Um, and that's what it's going to have. And we're just doing this, I think, for the first layer because of uh, after we have this forward pass, we're just going to raise a value error in which we cache it from here. Okay. So <clears throat> we the the, the the goal here um, is just to have these attention mask. Okay. So um, that's that. So uh, I know this might be confusing, so let me explain it from the call up code so that you understand how it works. So I have created this uh, simple um, uh, model in which I just want to show you the what that code that we saw uh, it's doing. 
So the, the goal is just to replace the first layer uh, with this cache here. So this cache's goal essentially is that when we have a forward path, we want to cache the inputs, right? And uh, we want to cache these attention mask and position IDs. And um, that's what uh, we're trying to do. So as you can see that I'm essentially initializing the model and I have the layer which I'm going to extract the first layer and I'm going to replace it with this cache here. Okay, so I'm printing these so that you can see what these does. Then um, I'm going to run this so that you can see. Um, let me see, it. Is, is it running? I think it is. So yeah, anyway, there is it, it's done. So as you can see that when we initialize our layer, so without caching anything, without replacing the layer with like the cache, this is what we get. We get this linear layer. But immediately when we add the cache, you can see that we essentially, the module is pointing to this linear layer, okay? So essentially what this, you know, how we can think about this is that when we apply the first layer, we're going to be applying this cache. And this cache purpose is just to cache these attention mask and position IDs and the input, okay? Um, so uh, that's why when I print the input, you see we have these values inside here. So these are the IDs. So I hope like this gives you a better intuition. But let's get to the, to the code. You will understand why we needed to do this. So um, now that we have cached all of these attention masks, we can essentially extract these um, and uh, also we can set all of these uh, these embedding token to CPU and these norm to, to CPU, okay? Um, so we can start with the pruning step of these uh, Lalama layers. So we're gonna loop through all of these layers, right? So uh, we're gonna get the layer and we're gonna apply this fine layers within, this is, it's a more like a modular. So when we pass these, we're gonna find these um, linear layers within it. So um, I hope I, I showed you how this work. Uh, I hope you can still remember that. Then we're gonna loop through all of these subset and we're gonna pass them within this past GPT, okay? Um, I hope you still remember this, uh, this code here. So what we do, um, which is the most important thing is gonna be here in which we're gonna apply the inputs to this layer and we're gonna get the outputs, right? So yeah, this is the output. Then now what we need to do is that we're gonna be looping through all of these uh, because of these are being appended within this GP2. So it's gonna be all of these subsets. Um, then we're gonna uh, apply the faster prune algorithm that we covered with right here. So because of we have initialized this uh, sparse GPT with the weight, so now we just like uh, applying this pr uh, fast prune just to, uh, to just to prune the weight, right, of that layer. Okay, um, that's what we do in this case. And also we're just gonna loop through all of these samples. Uh, like I said, this you can think of this as a pledge. Then we're gonna extract a specific, we're gonna pass the input to the layer and we're gonna store the, the, the output inside here, okay? Because of this is done in a layer fashion, so the inputs are gonna become the, the, the outputs are gonna become the inputs because we have to go to the next layer, okay? Um, that's what these, um, these uh, this is what we do. And we can see the um, significance of us using this cache so that we need these attention mask. You can see that we're applying them inside here, okay? So the, 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 the idea here is that we, 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 we do we quantizing these weights in place right so as we cont as we look through these these are uh, <laughs> why am I saying quantize uh, I meant prune we pruning these weights in place right so as we saw inside here when we covered this code essentially we can see that we're saying self layer the weight equals to the um the the, the pruned weights right so um that's what we're doing. Then 
uh, this is quite easy to understand also which is the llama evaluation so it's just literally the same code uh, with us but in this case it's just that we have some evaluation um, so we want to see how the model does like that we pruned how it does so we have to calculate the losses so as you can see this code is still the same um, uh, in which uh, we we be trying to uh, we're trying to extract we're trying to prune the weight that we get from these layers but the interesting thing that we do here which is what i want to cover is this here so we can see that we have these um these we pass these inputs to the model and we get the logic right so and then based on this we're going to calculate the loss based on the cross entropy loss okay so we append these negative likelihood uh, inside this list so um that's what this 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 is going to do so we're just evaluating the quantized weight the quant uh the pruned weight i mean to say so yeah i think i think that's all it is to this honestly um uh, that's that's like the the easy part but anyway um uh, or more easy to understand part i think so um so if you didn't understand this i'm gonna be uh, i'm gonna write this down uh using the lightning um library and we're gonna try to contribute uh if like no one has ever done so and if like i get more time then uh this way you'll see how i uh i implement this um and you i think that way you might be able to understand in a much more better way um but yeah i think um yeah i think that's all this is um yeah i'll appreciate um if you leave a like and subscribe and i'll see you guys in the next one thanks